because you know everybody else thinks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, so yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, we can just say, is there is there anything that, since we're talking about the building project, is there anything that this team needs to tackle right now? Um, I did have a quick conversation with Diane, who is uh, very close to Rebecca Wandel, who was the gal who used to work for planning decisions and did enrollment studies for Scarborough a couple of times with planning decisions. And planning decisions kind of broke up. They went off and became independent consultants. And Rebecca came to work at the middle school. So she's our current employee. And the last time we did an enrollment study, Rebecca she took it on as a like private consulting and um, she did an amazing job. And so we were kind of hoping that she would be willing to do it again because she has so much background information. She has, I mean, she's like a licensed professional. She has all the skills, but she's also so embedded in the community and, you know, and she's just been through the whole COVID thing with us and totally understands all the craziness with, you yep. Scarborough, you know, building up, building down, and enrollment up and enrollment down. And um, so anyway, long story short, um, Diane had a quick conversation with her and said, would you still do this, even though you're kind of, you kind of quit that gig? And she said, yeah, I would, I would consider it. It would be an interesting Oh, nice. Project. Oh, nice. I, um, I did yeah. too. I thought you were going down the no path. <laughs> nope. Nope. No, yeah. Don't care. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, we do have other resources. We have NESDEC, which is a uh, firm out of um, Massachusetts that does the whole New England thing. And, and we are a member of their community. We pay dues. And they're the ones that do the high school certification, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you guys were here for that yeah. last process when the high school got recertified or accredited. And, using the wrong word. Um, but NASDAQ also does other consulting stuff, kind of like MSMA. They have their sort of management profile. Um, so I was thinking about them. And then there was another uh, gal that reached out to us that Power School has a module. But honestly, if you can get somebody who really lives, knows, mm -hmm. understands, breathes Scarborough stuff, we're just so lucky to have that. Mm -hmm. um, so she did say she would be interested in thinking about it. The question is the timing and what's the best way to get a good lead. And she suggested that if we waited until the fall, even after the opening of school, like maybe get into the October count kind of time of year. October one is when the state pulls data because it's sort of the moment when they feel like, you know, your, your basic beginning of the school year registrations are done and, and your population kind of stabilizes a little bit. Yeah. Not that you can get move-ins during the year, but um, so she was thinking kind of in that way and said, you know, we'll let her put a little thought to it and come up with what she thinks would be the best way for us to get a true read on what's going on. Um, so that's good news, I think. And um, as far as the, the cost estimates that I wrote, on here, I think that was just taken from some of the conversations we've had about that would be a good thing to have. Um, but I'm not sure who asks for that. Was it, did, is the building committee going to talk to Harriman about that? Yeah. Because yeah. they're just, they're based on like the site selection process that we've had so far. There are just different possibilities exactly right. exactly but it at least it you know i think the consensus was if we could put a little bit more meat to the proposal mm -hmm. yeah we might get more attention yeah well the the feedback from the council is that it's not in our five years it's not real right yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah we just need to get it in there i think for that to kind of start. Right, and we've exactly. got some feedback from the community too that for them to sort of assess the situation in the libraries when they do a referendum right. in November. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. they want to see sort of what's to come. Yeah. So I think we have a target of before the election or before the referendum vote. Yeah. Um, you and I were at the town council meeting when they were talking about when they would set the referendum yes. date. And I think that their timing was August, right? Sometime in August, they would prove that the library yeah. is referendum. Yeah, I think it has to be then, right, to get the ballots. Right. Printed. 
um, that would be the latest they could have that conversation. And they were also talking about, council was talking about gathering more info about the library project. And mm -hmm. Some people love it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would behoove us to have at least something to plant there. So this will probably be one of those things that just sort of sits on our agenda until we so is that pretty much a lock that it's going to be on the? That's on there. The for that's November? that's mm -hmm. the library's request. Right. I am not convinced that the town council will vote to put it to referendum. So yeah. it's their choice. It's just how they vote, and I don't know. Right. I don't know exactly where they all. Well, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. are some that have said that they they want to know, you know, what this looks like. Yeah. It, you know, and then you weigh, you know, you weigh your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that they were decided so much as yeah. they want more information before. So they, they did leave it in their budget. No, they, they, so did they, they put that weird amendment. Yeah. yeah. They, they right. sort of, they acknowledged it. Yeah. And they, and they would need, they would need to vote on it if it were to go on the ballot by August. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. For the to hit the November ballot, yeah, and be a referendum along with the regular election, we would have to, yeah, mm -hmm. no decide by August. Decide by mm -hmm. August um, ish. I can we yeah. can reach out and see if it's picked a date yet for what meeting that's going to occur at because it's going right, to be a big, it's a summer it'll be a big, time, it's a summertime meeting too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, don't they do they go down to one too? I think they go right? down to one or more, yeah, summer, just like too. we do. Yeah, so that's something that we should sort of just keep in our minds. Um, I'm going backwards, but I sort of like it. Um, yeah. turf, turf, and, <laughs> turf and track, um, we're in the process of getting the design uh, approved for the track, uh, sorry, the turf replacement and making sure all the lines are in the right places and that logo's in the middle and all that stuff. So. Um, we've got Geosurfaces is the company that's creating and installing the turf, and um, we've been back and forth with them for the last month with a team of people saying, you know, here's what we want where, and the team is principally Mike Legage and Todd Souza because they both have the major use of the field, and then, um, you know, a bunch of their staff who know the ins and outs of things, and me and Jeff and uh, Todd Jepson. So everybody's kind of got hands on, and uh, Woodard and Curran is doing the project management for us. They've been awesome, super responsive, really super smart, responsive. Um, really, Good. really capable. Just like you, you get the feeling that you're not going to do something stupid because they're there to say, do this, do that, you know, don't do something stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and the, the, the target date for completion is mid-August. Right. Like, and that's um, going to be my question. Yeah. You know, and my, Mike is smartly planning for, ha you know, basically having alternate sites for yes. stuff through like mid-September, mm -hmm. um, you know, just in case. Right. And so, but that's, that's the, that's the goal. Yeah, and it's, you know, there's all these little ifs because of manufacturing, but the cool thing about yeah. ge picking geosurfaces is that they do the manufacturing and the install, so they're like soup to nuts for the whole project, and um, so they have a little bit more control than if you're subcontracting all this stuff. They'll subcontract some of the site work and surveying and stuff like that, but um, they're still saying knock on wood, that, that they can do it, um, that the, the actual material should be delivered by the end of July, mm -hmm. and um, that there'll be time for them to get it in and ready to go by the middle of August. So when did they start taking out the existing, is that all That's in that That's actually all window? part of that same thing, yeah. yeah. And, and from what I understand, it's not a super complex thing. I think that doing some of the site work around the outside of it where it's anchored um, is the only really sort of tricky piece to it. And otherwise it's more like, you know, roll down the carpet and roll down the carpet. They do have to level everything out. And, um, and they're also coordinating with the fill people because, um, you know, they have that stuff that goes yeah. into the turf. So you've got the grass nodules and then you've got the foamy whatever's. Yeah. 
the mm-hmm. film people are separate? It's a different company, but they work. Um, they'll work as a sort of a subcontractor to Geosurfaces. They'll work hand in hand. They're going to pay them separately. Um, that's been really interesting. Never did that project before. <laughs> Learning something new every and, year, every yeah. day, every day, yeah. every, every week. week. <laughs> so they're only going to take like two. Oh, it's just two weeks. Later. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to pick the places where people are. <laughs> I'm scared. To find those <laughs> that was nice of you to just put it over there. Oh, I yeah. I'm the book saver. Oh, I would take. Oh, I walk them outside. Yeah. I'm I'm a bug saver. I'm I'm okay okay my steering wheel this morning and I almost crashed out. my car. Oh no! <laughs> From a spider no. on my steering wheel. I'm scared. Of I don't mind spiders. Yeah. Spiders are good for snakes. And snakes are fun. Yeah, no snakes. No snakes. No snakes. I'm good with I'm good with snakes. I don't mind frogs, but I don't like to get close where they might jump and attack me. Because <laughs> <laughs> they do that. No vertical pools for you. Yes. No I'm going to show you my frog lanyard that I got last week because I'm, I'm thinking, oh, vertical pools. It's got all this frog. <laughs> oh, all right. Change over. Yeah, I know. I I'll, I'll wear that for the next meeting for sure. Um, so they only think a couple of weeks for installation, though. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, and you know, all of this is just sort of yeah. you're going. Geez, please hope it all works out. Yeah. But you know, they're they're super pros. These guys did Gillette Stadium for the Patriots, so we got to oh, kind of figure that cool. they. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. I, I, you got to figure the kids so sort of kind of know what they're doing. Yeah, they probably didn't do it in two weeks, but. No, um, but you know they've got. Yeah, <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> yeah, yeah so I did. Yeah. The football team, um, the football schedule is out already, and the first game is Thornton at home, and so I know they were talking about that at the boosters, like Thornton at home here in Scarborough. Yeah, so oh, they're like, geez. and Mike has his contingency plan right, but this is yeah. the apparently this is the first time they've played Thornton at home, the first game in. Of, of course, 10 years. that would work out that way. Right. right. So um, everybody's like, "Oh, please, please." Is that please. a September date? Yeah. 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 Well, so so far so good, and yeah. you know, I'm I'm on all of the emails and making sure that everybody gets the messages, and I turned into some sort of project coordinator uh, somewhere along the line. So I'll be able to give you guys updates, and you know, and I'm sure that. Once we actually get to the point where we know somebody's going to be rolling in here with trucks, we can put messages out to the community as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, we don't. Um, we will have a real, actual, promised schedule. Actually, probably within a couple of weeks. Oh, cool. nice. So once they get the order in and they know it's in the queue and everything is coming, then you know, barring catastrophe, they should know exactly how it's going to play out. With the yarn. Something about yarn is the latest thing. Yeah. It's an interesting word, yarn. Is that what they do they mean the, 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 the grass bits? That's <laughs> and by yarn, do you mean sewing? Again, lingo, right? Yeah. You know, we gotta learn yarn. Yarn. what what's what's the yarn hmm. yarn issues. <laughs> so we as a finance committee then are gonna have to figure out track what happens next yeah. yeah yeah and i was taking a look at um what the real language is in the town charter about what does your referendum mean mm-hmm. and does it give you the authority to spend or bond because that's always been a question like are you just authorizing how much you bond, bond. oh right and then, right because you're borrowing money and right. so that has this fiscal impact for the community versus oh. whether you have it in your budget but I think just from close reading of it, that it really is trying to authorize the expense as well. The project. So, um, you know, we're not quite to the point where we need to do anything yet, but I think we'll probably want to go back and talk to the towns, maybe talk to the town's attorney about what's in the charter and say, okay, you know, do we need to re approved by the community for a different amount? Do we, value engineer it yeah. down to the point where we can get it done um you know it's not going to get cheaper over the next right. year but i wonder if there's any upside to doing that now because they're about to take on their charter remember they did their charter review and they're about to pick it back up are they ready to yes actually vote on it 
No, but I think they're going to start going through all the recommendations oh, okay. from the committee. I think that's where they're at. I wonder if maybe we should talk to John or who would we talk to? We should talk to Colin probably yeah. and ask them about their interpretation of that. Because mm -hmm. I know Tom and I have had that conversation in the past over something or another. It might already be a, like a recommendation from the target mm -hmm. committee. I, I, I know the recommendations are already public. I don't recall though. I'm not going to pretend I read the whole thing. I might know. <laughs> yeah, that's the frustrating part about, you know, no progress on real real progress on the on site, site I know because, you know it, I was hopeful or anticipating that at least by the fall that that you know the current site would either be eliminated yep mm -hmm. right as a as a potential site for a new school or, or confirmed. selected right, <laughs> right. Selected, yeah right? exactly it definitely won't be selected by then or I'd, I'd be shocked if that were the case and then you know but whether or not it was you know, be eliminated oh, so yeah. that we can just finish Move this. On. Right, yeah. exactly. You know, and have a plan and yeah. Because yeah. there will be, be probably, you know, likely close to a million, if not a little more than a million left. Yeah. That was a that was approved by the voters. Exactly. Once the um, turf has been the new turf has been. So. Right. Yeah. And could we do the track? I wonder if we could do the track on a map with another. Well, the the original estimate was that it was going to cost more than the one point nine. That it was oh, going to be, yeah, go yeah. up over two and a half percent. Yeah. Um, and so there were a lot of little, what I would call ancillary bits to the project that were not specifically just the fixing of the track, but that it was putting in some wiring and putting in some um, fencing and working on the borders and and some things that. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, what if we just narrowed it down and then some of these extra things we could do through operating or through capital in, in, in following years, where we would know that it would be part of the big vision, but it wouldn't necessarily be Done, the right, project right. Yep. that was authorized, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of where I was headed before this whole site selection thing went weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I still think that that's a, a reasonable approach is to say, well, how much money you got left in the bank and then what can you get for it? You yeah. know, and, and then go from there and figure out how much we can pull out of there. Yeah. Um, and then also look at the charter and see what we... Well, right, and then that's the other thing, right? So if, if you were able to say the charter authorizes us only to spend this much money or it says we can bond this much money and then we can figure out the rest on our own. Yeah. It's two different, two different yeah. approaches. Do you think um, going moving forward with the budget, if we know that this track and turf is a 10 year lifespan, can we start putting aside in our capital reserve money account money every year? Can we budget every year so that we're not asking for the bond? Has this officially been turned over to the schools this facility mm, nothing official about it that i could tell i mean the way i see it is it was still dumped, technically there it was dumped on us <laughs> exactly <laughs> so should they be the ones saving towards they tried that um there was actually when the when the turf field first opened thing officially has been turned over yeah. At least they haven't told me. When, right. the, when the turf field was <laughs> first opened, be. it was making a lot of re rental revenue. Right. And you probably remember the story that, yeah. that they put it into a reserve account. The idea was to do all the maintenance through that. And then it stopped being a hot commodity because everybody was getting yeah. turf fields. So that revenue stream tapered off and they used it. And then they didn't have enough to yep. um, do it. But I, I think. Honestly, I think capital reserve money should be part of our year end process every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if we have surplus, I think, which please, dear God, we always do, um, we should be allocating a small portion of that every year to building that capital reserve account now that we yeah. have it. Um, and then, you know, there's going to be an expectation that because we have that, that we are using it to, you know, keep up with maintenance on some of these regular things that are going to pop up well there's the maintenance of it and then there's the replacement right yeah agree i agree and yeah. could the replacement be 
a line item in the budget that we're setting, like regardless of the surplus, we're setting aside money every year out of our budget for the replacement that's needed in 10 years. Could I'm we not sure that could we do that? Are we allowed to do it? Are you? We really like there's some it's it's ML. I don't think you can. I think the only way that I've seen um, that I've seen schools be able to fund an account like that is for there to be money left over that was originally expected to be spent on something rather than saying, oh, we have a line item in our budget. And what we're really doing is we're taking that and putting it in our bank account. Because right. remember, we only have approval to spend that money in the current year yeah. from the voters. And I'm sure you could probably make a really cool case with some semantics that would get you there. But I think that, um, you know, the spirit of the thing is that you only get approval for the money you need to run things during the course of the year. Um, and we can get some advice on that now that we have the capital reserve fund. I know that the Tom Hall tried to put $200,000 in his budget to collect taxes and put it into yeah. exactly that, to put mm -hmm. it into the bank account. Well, because but how do you ever you, get out of borrowing? Well, I think that's part of the problem, right? But you're, I don't think you're supposed to collect more taxes than you need, like Kate said, for the year yeah. that you're budgeting for. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like this in my head, like yeah, the finances it, of it, it just seems logic, yeah. right because now we're paying interest on this loan when mm -hmm. versus yeah, just collecting it. Right, we're gonna have the yeah. debt service versus just collecting yeah. up front and yeah. saving. Would do it if you were doing it right, home. just right. just like a regular household yeah. budget, exactly. If you were doing it at home, you would take a piece of your revenue, which is yeah. your income, and yeah. and set it yeah. in the savings. It makes perfect sense, um, and I don't want to just say. We can't do that. I feel like I know that we can't, but yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask some folks too. So for the capital reserve account, the the um, mechanics of it for this year are not terribly difficult. Um, I've talked with the town about things they're gonna actually put it in an interest bearing account. It's gonna be segregated in a fund that I'm gonna build in Eunice. Um, it'll just be a special fund, just like our um, local grants and the. Like the tech maintenance fees is a really good example, right? We've collected those fees, mm -hmm. we put them in a separate place where you could only use them for tech stuff. Um, we can build an account uh, fund just exactly like that. And that'll be our capital reserve fund because the state doesn't particularly care about those. They're not like a state or federal grant. Right. Um, but the auditors can still look at them and, and we can watch them and they'll, they'll be on our financials. So. So maybe from that perspective, it's just a question of setting intentions for that account and knowing that in 10 years, we're mm -hmm. going to have to replace not the entire project again, right? But at least probably the surface. Mm -hmm. Right. So and, I don't know. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, unless we go out and we build our new fabulous athletic complex, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> that, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're all biting our tongues. Um, but I, I will ask some of our um, really smart people at the state level, at Department of Education, Finance, if it's possible for a school just to put a line in their budget that says, you know, we want to put save money into yeah. a reserve account. To budget for reserves is really- I mean, it was the biggest criticism when this whole thing started oh, yeah. the first time it failed is why has no one been saving knowing that this right. only had- well, and, and that's you know that's kind of the the uh, a big example of the question that we get all the time is like why do you keep putting school buses in your right. in your capital budget you're going to replace yep. three school buses every year why isn't that in your operating budget and at, there was a point when we actually did have it in the operating budget um, for about two years and then we had you know an economic crisis and suddenly we needed to take. $300,000 out of our budget somewhere. And so we put it back into capital and that was where all the town's vehicle replacement was. And I think we're getting a little better at that, not to go in the weeds, but the town is actually appropriating a lot of that money through taxes rather than borrowing it. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I know that's been a goal of theirs, right? To get those things done. Right, so if you, look, if you look at our capital budget the, in some of the documents we have where it says the funding source, a lot of the smaller ones are appropriated. If it's under $100,000, it's definitely appropriated. So 
you're not borrowing and you're just raising the money, but it's for that truck in that year, right? Yeah. So you raise it, you spend it, done. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a fiscal policy standpoint, that's really the way to do it. Yeah. And I think, you know, whatever the mechanism is, I think this team can pay attention to making sure that we're stashing money for that purpose mm -hmm. and not running into the same issue again. There's no anticipation of like increased rental fees once this thing is done, right? Because everyone has to work now. Mm -hmm. like I wouldn't is. think so. I mean, I would think that, that it would be better than it is today because the condition of the turf doesn't lead people to want to use it. Um, you know, if you have the choice between renting for your soccer league here or renting for your soccer league, and league in a newer facility, you're going to go for the newer facility. Maybe when we're brand new, um, that would be more attractive. But I wonder, I feel like we're so maxed out there anyways, even with the terrible facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a big yeah. money maker like it was right. when yeah. it was exciting and new and different and nobody had such a thing. But I think it really, I think our investment is for fundamentally for ourselves and our kids yeah. and yeah. our yeah. programs. And whatever we get over and above that is kind of gravy. The donation box is probably the thing. For us to stash away, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and and not, not to go down another rabbit hole, but there's the whole question of sponsorships. And, you know, yeah. do you want the, the Scarborough yes. High School hand up your heels? Or, yeah. You know, there's. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I most certainly do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, that's something that there is, there is some a board policy about advertisement, yeah. sort of, you know, yeah. and, and like promoting of of businesses and things like that, whose name you can have where. Um, but I would think that might be another avenue whereby we could help with the trap. The Hannaford track, Scarborough Hannaford track. We've got little banners and signs and things so we can fix them right up. There's got to be somebody in town who really wants their name on that track. Okay. Well, anyway, that's that's sort of a roundabout of building and turf and capital. And just to go back to the building project for a minute, I know we don't have another one of those visioning things until the fall, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, which, you know, that's probably good. Maybe we we'll gear people up and they'll be more excited about anything in September than they are in June. Um, but I did wonder about a couple of outreach possibilities, and I'm not sure who would own this, maybe if the Building Communications Committee gets their feet on the ground. Um, one of them was we talked about in, at the leadership team um, Tuesday was getting to the pre-K folks, the, um, wait, we do this. Um, well, you know, the, the pre-K facilities in, in town, the Tottenham's and Heidi's houses and, and yep. folks like yep. that, because those would be the families that would likely benefit with younger kids oh, from a new school. From a new school. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the point being made at the meeting on Tuesday was that a lot of the people who, a lot of the families who would actually have kids who would be able to take advantage of a new building, their kids are infants. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, They're how do we find them? Yeah, yeah. That was right. Just that exactly. thought. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. gleam in their mother's eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're they're, um, they're part of family planning. <laughs> right. But so you know, at for least we can catch a family further down. And, yeah. And that are just getting their families started. <laughs> and then the other thing I was thinking about was some way to, to get those really beautiful promotional materials that um, Harriman did, you know, <coughs> the cool charts and graphs and mm -hmm. into a brochure or a printed document of some kind that we could- Some uh, direct yeah, mail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we did this thing called Schoolhouse News some years ago. And the idea behind that was a little fold-in that went into the leader and um, we did a, 
quarterly for probably two years. And the idea was that we're reaching out to you outside of budget season. We just want you to know what great things are going on. A lot of communities have them. I think Cape has one and Durham RC5 has one, but it's a little newsletter to the community, but it's not to the school community, it's to everybody. everybody. Yeah. And so um, somebody was talking about, you know, well, with my you know, we had people going door to door and we had people knocking and saying, hey, neighbor, you know, this thing's happening. Yeah. But the, the look of those presentations that, that Harriman's been doing, is, I think, is so charming and bright mm -hmm. and cheerful and full of facts, but also interesting. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. They are very and, trying. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they've done such a great job of it. We have them, we've been sending stuff out electronically and we have links and we have recordings, but there's people that aren't in the demographic that we're going to reach mm -hmm. with those things. So, yeah. I would uh, think this would fall to our new subcommittee, right? Wouldn't you think, Joe? The communications subcommittee. for the building. Well, yeah, we got to get that going. And it's it's frustrating because th there was one, uh, one person who we identified who, um, responded to the survey who we thought would be a perfect, um, not just subcommittee chair, but then also part of the building steering committee and just, just too busy and mm -hmm. can't, so, can't um, right. And so we did, and then we did put out emails to invite the, uh, there were four others who expressed interest in volunteering for a communications committee. Um, so we sent out emails inviting them to the next advisory we're having an advisory, um, but which is the subset of the bigger committee um, on Tuesday of next week. So hopefully, so see if they show up and have enough time to come in. Yeah, and so we can just get started with something. And then the idea is really, I mean, it, you know, our feeling was at least um, that right, right now, like the site selection and all these other big things, like we just we need more engagement. Yeah. You know. Yeah before we're really going to get anywhere. So um, doing some kind of a blitz over the course of the summer in preparation for some of the things that are already scheduled kind of for the fall as far as like educational visioning and that kind of thing. But we just need we need more awareness. We just need more we people get kind a of, little momentum. right? Try and get some of the momentum in terms of awareness and, and people talking about it. Another thing somebody mentioned was Summerfest. And I mean, yep. I know a lot of people go to summer fest mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily connected with the schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should. Because I really like feel that. like we have, I mean, I shouldn't say that we have good outreach to the school community either because <laughs> nobody's showing up, but, you know, at, at least we know that we can send them things right. where you, you know, you have yeah. people who are just not going to subscribe to the school newsletter or the town newsletter. So, you know, put it booth up at summer mm -hmm. fest and maybe have some printed things that's usually in yeah. august i think yeah and and really awesome floor plans and <laughs> yeah we have like a computer yeah. there that like yeah. runs through a presentation a little slide slide presentation. Presentation. Yeah. yeah yeah and everything's wired out there so you can have all kinds of cool buildings yeah runs with sirens yeah <laughs> go around and ding, go over there and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this would just be how comfortable the board is, but we might be at a point where we need to start reaching out to the people we know who have the groups that listen to them and just say, can you guys just put this up on your page, help us out, mm, yeah. spread the word. Some of the social media yeah. that's always telling us what to do. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> Maybe we can tell them what to do. <laughs> yeah, just ask for it. Ask for uh, some, did I some right? promotion. <laughs> No, really, you're right. I mean, they have obviously they have those pages because people are interested in the school community. So great. Yeah, and there's well, various you, ones. You know, and at this point, even if it's a you know you know like a debate over whether we should be you know for I mean, sure at least something talk about it. Yeah, talking about yeah. it, right? Yeah. Rather, yeah. rather have that kind of out in the open a little bit and Absolutely. generating that that awareness um, than than not because then you can make the case and you're at least yeah. Well, that's what it is, right? Just having anyone paying attention to it. Right. Whether mm -hmm. you hate it, love it. Somewhere in between. Any, yeah. any, any piece of attention is different. Is yeah. 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 Just thinking about like the young families that are going to benefit from this branch. Just like if the day we tour these buildings mm -hmm. now as you're planning for 
you know, because you're here in this school system and yeah. whatnot, just a data tour of this school and then like also have those displayed in the school as we're walking around. Like, all right, this, mm -hmm. is, this is the curriculum we follow, mm -hmm. but we're also hoping to grow the school and like this. And, you could take them yeah. to Blue Point and then take them to Wentworth and show the difference. Yeah, yes. here's what you could have. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like a tour day for the sun. Mm -hmm. Open to, oh, yeah. open to the public for young families, not during the school years. Right. Yeah. Well, I know they they felt like um, the building principals at K two felt like the folks that did come from the town council and mm -hmm. the board and mm -hmm. you know some of our folks that were invited to come in really got their eyes open to some extent. And, yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. The more you can do that kind of thing. The more somebody in the community might get behind it. Do you yeah. know if the netting is going to come off in the summer around the playgrounds? Well, I know Acorn has like the netting. Uh, the still the one at Pleasant Hill, I don't think will come down because my understanding is that the neighbors wanted that. Because oh. that's always been one way that young families would they can come on right, the playground. They can play on the playground. Oh, they can then. be play. Oh, I thought you meant on the perimeter of Pleasant Hill. Eight corners has a netting around there? Around the, yeah. In the summer? Well, uh, no, as of right now, I'm just wondering, is it coming down? Like you can't go in the playground yeah. because it's closed off? Yeah. Well, Blue Point is wide open. Hmm. Yeah, and I think kid, uh, families I in think the neighborhood Pleasant use Hill Pleasant Hill as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, you know, Eight Corners doesn't really have a, a super walkable no family no, community right, no. it's more commercial over right. there so maybe that's part of it um but i i do know the other two have had yeah. like folks who live in the community probably yep. in the used to play a long time before yeah. the kids were there um we are having our next we've had our was last one the last one the first one we had at one of the schools we had it at mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. corners so we're our next one i think is pleasant hill and then we'll have one at blue point maybe there's like if we could just get people to come to those, they can tour the school and sit yeah, down and join our meeting. It's just mm -hmm. no one, I don't think anyone came, did they? So I was remote for the eight Steve. Day. Steve, yeah. But no one else did. But that was the hope is get people, right. Right. Have people in, in the building. Right. See. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. a good point. And I think that's not a bad strategy. Maybe we'll just try to pull it a little more. Right. And maybe people will, like in Pleasant Hill, will have a particular interest and come to that one. Who knows? You said you did a corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Pleasant Hill community, just in my anecdotal experience, seems to be super tuned in more mm -hmm. so than a corners. Yeah. Um, Blue Point sort of in the middle. But maybe I'll yeah. ask my HOA president to share when the Blue Point meeting is. Yeah, that's a good idea for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do have a lot of babies in the neighborhood. We do. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, right. The babies are our demographic. But that's know? what I mean. Especially I if we're going to have to just start making extra yeah, efforts to sometimes. ask for help. <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing. I mean, part of being in these leadership positions is to network with people yeah you know, mm -hmm. and you know the people who whose ear you have for whatever reason yeah oh which is a good segue to the budget outreach and the only mm -hmm. thing i wanted to ask about that is i know we have um we've been putting hey go vote mm -hmm. in the district-wide newsletter which goes to every family in the district and then also the individual schools are putting in a plug that says yes vote. um i had asked Todd about those sandwich board things that say vote here i don't think those ever made it out i don't know if you could find them also can worry about that too um, we used to have them right out in front of the entrances when people would drop their kids off if he was able to find them. Um, but do we want to do them? There's robocalls, but robocalls are sort of controversial. Sometimes people are like, why are you bothering me? Yeah, I think people ignore. I know. I <laughs> the only time we really use them now is for storms and yep. emergencies and right. stuff, and that's probably not a bad thing. 
but that's pretty much the extent of what we've been doing is putting things on the communication yeah mm -hmm. portals that we already have yeah. communication yeah we saw today on the way in she said there's probably just shy of a thousand early ballots cast yeah which is low but last june was really low yeah it's true I would have thought this year would have been bigger. Well, there's some primary stuff going on. There's some yeah, there's a council races election. and the councilor. Yeah. Did anybody tell you who we should vote for for town council? No. <laughs> I saw the candidates there. I thought they all sounded really smart and they did, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and engaged and interested and definitely. And I didn't see any lemons in the group. No, no. they all seemed very bright. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be an interesting. Interesting. Them could do it. Yeah, sure. All right. So it's 5 15. I want you guys to be able to get out on time. So um, I'm going to go open up the financials in a second, but I just wanted to say the quick update on year end processes. Um, first of all, the fact that Ruth is retiring is kind of terrifying. Because <laughs> we have a brand new audit firm this year. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. that's right. Oh, um, we just met the lead auditor. Um, these are all running together. Anyway, super great guy. Um, Markham is the name of the company, um, and they're out of Rhode Island, is where they have their whole base, but they have clients all through New England. Um, I think we'll only be the second main client that they have and the first municipality. So they've got a little bit of learning to do, but they have a Portland office. And in the Portland office, they have a gal called Darlene Kukos, who used to work for Mac Page and was actually on the town audit for Scarborough. Scarborough mom, one of the booster moms, um, super smart and great lady. Oh, good. So we asked, hey, you know, we're gonna take advantage of this person that works for you that's that knows our stuff. And he said, Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we want to be able to have somebody in here who can, you know, hit the ground running a little bit. So that was kind of helpful. And um, so the things that'll happen for the next couple of months as far as year end is concerned is um, in June, we're gonna close out payroll. For the fiscal year, we do um, all kinds of fancy transfers to book accruals for the summer, which is a liability that the auditors want us to cover. So I finish my teaching job on June 17th and I get payroll through the summer, but I've already earned the money. So if I walked in on June 18th and said, Give me all my money under the law, we'd have to have it available. And so, you know, that's a few million, few million for the teachers for five summer payrolls. Um, it's imaginary because if the town of Clark Scarborough closed down on June 30, we had bigger fish to fry than, <laughs> you know, figuring out how to pay the teachers. But it's it, it does impact our, our fiscal um, status, our bond rating, things like that. So we'll do a bunch of transfers to make sure that at year end, we have everything where we need it to be. Um, and in July and August, we're still getting bills that are actually for FY22. Um, so we actually spend the whole summer kind of cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, moving these around, making sure that everything is paid off. By the end of August, we hopefully have everything paid for that belongs in FY22. Um, the auditors will come a little bit in the springtime. Um, within the next month or so, they'll come and do a little bit of testing and kind of get used to what we've got, what's going on. And then they'll come and do big field work um, in the fall. So usually by September, I'm able to give some kind of a report out to the board. It's often the first meeting in October, just the way that it fits in with the start of the school year. And then I do the slideshow and say, here's how our year ended as far as we know. Um, between uh, the start of October and the end of November, the auditors will be in and out and asking questions and getting everything all squared away. And so we probably won't get an audit report until the end of the year, um, the calendar year. But that's kind of how things flow. And it's a little weird because usually as we do the quarterlies, we're just saying, okay, you know, done with the quarter. Within the next month, we know what we're going to tell you. 
but because it's the year end and we've got to close everything out, grants have to all be reported out and reimbursed and posted to the right places. And summer's a little more um, work to get the year end in the shape that it's supposed to be. Um, but depending on when we all get together, I can give you progress reports on those. And you'll get the pleasure of a big fat slideshow <laughs> in the fall. <laughs> I'll tell you where we're at. And I'm hoping, you know, it looks like we're going to have some decent surplus, not as much as we had last year, but just enough. I just want enough so that we're stepping down in our use of revenue in the uh, coming budget years and not, you know, having these big holes because we've used so much surplus in these yeah, last two right. years that all of a sudden we don't have it. Um, so that's the target. And we'll see how that plays out. The financials don't have a huge amount. Let me see if I pop it. Have a huge amount of detail in them. Um, they do have a little guidance on the first two pages, like I usually do. Um, a couple of things called out in expenditures of variances and, and what they mean from prior years. Um, revenues are pretty steady. Um, adult debt, school nutrition. School nutrition is still super exciting because they're making money. Um, <laughs> so it's the best story of the year. Um, in capital projects, things kind of slow down this time of year because um, for facilities, Todd is trying to do things during the, the winter break and when kids aren't here and staff isn't here, so things aren't disruptive. So the money's either spent in the summertime or it's spent over winter and February vacation, sometimes April break, and then things kind of calm down until kids get out of school. So we'll pick up again in, in the summertime. Um, and then in the actual financials, you'll see it looks really similar to what we've seen before. You've got the current your date expended in the fuzzy column here. And then you've got three years worth of um, comparisons, the current year and the two prior years. And we're, we're kind of still crawling out of how odd FY20 and 21 have been, um, but you can, you'll see if you look at the categories that we're kind of bouncing back to FY20 numbers um, in terms of percentages of what's spent, so. It's been a lot more normal, whatever that might be. <laughs> and um, there's a page, half page for adult education. Adult Head still has a pretty high fund balance because um, they're still not fully up to speed on all the programs and the participation in all the programs. So the, um, the uh, amount that they've spent on instructors is still a little bit under budget, but. Uh, that means they'll have a fund balance at year end that we can use for revenue in the next year, just like we do with general. And school nutrition is still keeping pace, spending and, and revenues are the same, which is just so extraordinary. Um, grant funds, we still have a lot of grant funds, uh, revenues to collect. Um, and I complain about that. I've now complained for three quarters about their brand new grant reimbursement system, which is so cumbersome and so annoying and takes twice as long. But the, the cool thing about the grants is that you're allocated the money, you're spending the money, you know you're going to get it back. It's already set aside for you. It's just mm -hmm. a question of bureaucracy and actually having the money move from the state to the town. So um, it's not a worry, it's just annoying. And uh, the last page is the capital budget. And we've made a pretty good dent in our, um, in our budgeted amounts. The, the most money that we haven't spent is the turf and track. And we did get the first big bill from Woodard and Curran. Their um, services for the whole project are supposed to cost us around 100 grand. So that's a piece of the puzzle. And, and they have been working their butts off. So. Yeah. Um, they're going to bill us for what they've done so far and then kind of keep the rest in, in reserve. But everything else is, is um, you know, pretty much spent down. Um, the other one that, that has still a high balance on it is the high school STEM lab or science lab retrofit. And that one is almost done too. We just got, what, maybe the last one on that. 
So when you see quarter four, you'll see those go down. Um, that was like the five cent tour. So mm -hmm. if you have questions about it, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave it out there for you. You guys have a link to it um, in, the, in the agenda that I just sent out. I can also email the doc to you if you want, um, if that's helpful. And then you can have a peek and make sure that there's nothing crazy in there before I post it. In the agenda. Yeah, it's, yeah, the agenda. Agenda. Yeah, it's, it's linked access. into the agenda. That, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, so nothing scary in there, which is nice. Yeah, that's good. I know. That's what you like. <laughs> I don't want to see anything scary. I'm really looking forward to getting my head out of um, COVID absence management after next week. And dig back into some financials. I was saying to Diane the other day, I, I feel like my my real responsibilities have usually been sort of maybe 60, 40, 70, 30, depending on the time of year, finance and HR. It's completely flipped. It's like all HR right now. And you know, even with Maria, who's been an awesome addition, she got sucked into doing pool testing coordinator. So that's done. She's only just back in the office as of last month. So, oh wow! I mean, she's not she hasn't been here, but she's been yeah. out and about running things. So yeah. we're getting ramped up again. But can I ask you another question about the enrollment then? Yeah. Uh, once Rebecca starts it, how long does that take? I guess I'm wondering because I feel like we should check with Lisa and see like how we impact her. I'm assuming she's going to need that information. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Month and a half ish, maybe. It's not, yeah, it's not a super long process, um, particularly not, with the systems that she's already got built and the okay. data that she's already got built. I don't know if you've seen any of her presentations, but yeah. I mean, they are um, outstanding. And she's just got an enormous amount of. Yeah, it might even be faster because she's already done one here. Well, yeah. see, that's the thing. I was thinking that it might be easier for her to take the projections that she already has and so maybe update some of the data. Then it would it would definitely be easier for that to happen than for somebody to start from start scratch. From scratch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but it, I guess let me flip that around and say if you talk with Lisa and ask her, you know, when is it going to be critical for you to have that information, then we can. Yeah turn around and and talk with Rebecca about it because she could do it I think you know she could do it over the summer but her take was that the data would be better and stronger mm -hmm. if we waited you know? yeah and I think Diane brought up the point at our long-range planning meeting the town is about to make potentially some big choices mm -hmm. right. so if we could hold off until that's done mm -hmm. that's going to be probably the best thing for the study true yeah. true because it's all about how many homes oh, right yeah right? and it used to be in the good old days you did a demographic study and it was about birth rates and death rates and current population but with the growth the the boom in in housing yeah mm -hmm. it feels like there's a lot they changed that whole course. model and that was where we got the newer types of um, projections that Rebecca did the last time, which yeah, incorporated she, right, housing she, starts. Yep, we had all those different scenarios. Right, and she was, you know, in their meeting with it was Dan Bacon at the time, I think, and Jay, and you know, sitting down and talking about who lived where and what kind of apartments they were and who could, yeah. you know, how many kids you could fit in there. And so they, she'll do that again. The time really in the weeds. I would think so. Yeah, and and again, this is really just like the first little. Yeah. Hey, could you, could you, would you? Yeah. yeah. We haven't really talked about details at all. Gotcha. But it would be helpful to know where's the sweet spot in terms yeah. of getting that done. Well, it helps to know it's not a lengthy process. I have no idea how long. I it's don't think so. I mean, I'm here. I am saying, yeah, it's easy. You should just push it <laughs> <a couple> weeks. <laughs> and she does have a day job but now, but um, no, it, it, I think she she did different layers of it too so there may be like a quick version and then a more in-depth yeah. version depending on how much data you want to pull into the plan that would be true for me so um but yeah let's find out what harriman thinks yeah um you know how that fits into their scheme i'm wondering if you should also solicit any feedback from 
um, the council just before we go and do it. And it's not going to be something that they're expecting to see because my guess is they'll want to see that as part of the building project. Right. I don't know. Well, it's a it's a part of the justification for the building project, certainly. Small part, but yeah. It's part of the justification for the size of the building, right? Yes. Because you could say we yes. need a new building for the existing kids. Yeah. Because of the, you know, the Metros. deficits and problems mm -hmm. that exist with what we currently have. But in order to make the argument that we need it. A building that has a greater capacity too yes or that's future proofed to, to yeah. some degree you know that's where you need those yeah those numbers um so it's kind of where does that fit into the, the planning process um i don't know maybe rebecca will say well i think that the enrollment study that i gave you the last time is going to come back there's so much new development in town though Right. Well, there's there's been a lot of that that was taken into account. Really. There was, yeah. I mean, the she carrier woods was up, the beacon was up, or planned. Um, I mean, obviously the downs is is I think bigger than what we had expected, but it was already on the horizon. So I'd be curious to know like how the beacon panned out versus what they thought it was, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and the the town has done some of that work, I think, too, of like. We didn't think we were going to live in a two bedroom, but maybe they are living in a two bedroom. You know, housing is so tight. Right. Mm -hmm. so right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they, there's great amenities there too for families. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's not an, an odd choice, really. Yeah. You know, if you're thinking of your executive couple with no kids, maybe sure. they have kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stopped them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know that that wasn't the expectation, but maybe that's how it played out. Well, you know, to your point earlier, it'd be really interesting to know what it is that the town is looking at already in yes. terms of data. And, you know, can we use some of that yeah. for our purposes as well? Because they're, like you said, they're making those same decisions or, or decisions about growth yeah. based on something. I can talk to John Anderson a little bit about yeah. what they have. Maybe we can the... we could collaborate because yep. there was definitely some collaboration the last time with the town planning office, and yeah, you know, they were super helpful, and then they leaned on our information as well. So and it serves everybody well to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I wonder. How much they want our data. data? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it impacts all of their decisions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and sure. their understanding of our requests too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big stuff. <laughs> it's 5 32. Should we say we're done? Yeah. yeah. We should. You guys have a, a few things to do today. Mm -hmm. I need to 